in your life. This marks the turning point in your life. This is the point where things are turning for the better. Right now, moving forward. They are turning for the better. In the name of Jesus. Father, I've received that. I've received that for me. I've received that for my household. God, I've received that for my children. I've received it for my family. I've received it for this ministry, this congregation. For every household, I've received it, Lord. For as far reaching as our assignment goes, I've received it, Lord. Things are turning for the better in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. And, and, and that's what I'm going to be ministering on. I'm, the, the title for today, the, the topic is faith as a seed. Faith as a seed. And if I were going to use a, a subtopic, I didn't list one, um, but if I were going to use one, it would be preparing for the turnaround. Yeah. Preparing for the turnaround. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I want you to find a couple of places in your Bible. Um, we're, we're, we're going to be at Matthew uh, chapter 17. And uh, so let's, let's just find, find a spot there. In Matthew 17, and uh, uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna get there momentarily, and then I want you to turn with me your Bible to First John chapter five, and I believe we're going to actually start at First John chapter five. First John chapter five. So we're talking about faith as a seed, preparing for your turnaround. <clears throat> and, it, and if you're taking notes, this is just, this is just a kind of a leading statement that, that I want to build on uh, by the Spirit of God. Uh, faith is the seed of your victory. Faith is the seed of your victory. The same way, the same way if you have a garden and you and you have crops, whatever you harvest in your garden came from a seed. So the victory, the victory that belongs to each of us, it comes from a seed. And the seed of your victory is faith. We we could say it this way. We could say it this way. Uh Faith is the means whereby things in your life turn for the better so you can have victory in every area. Faith is the means whereby those present evil conditions in your life turn for the better. See, as they turn for the better, you experience victory. Faith is the seed of your victory. Are you following? So, so without faith, there, there will be no victory. There will be no victory apart from faith. Hallelujah. But we don't have to worry about that because the Bible tells us in Romans, uh, I believe it's Romans 12, that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's dealt to each and every one of us the very same measure of faith that God used in the creation of the heavens and the earth. The very measure of faith God used to raise his son Jesus from the dead, that measure is the measure that he dealt to every believer. Every one of us has been dealt the measure. Now it's on us. We have the responsibility to take the measure we've been dealt and exercise it for the development of it. We have to learn and understand uh, how to operate in faith, by faith. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? You remember, uh, it's, it's over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, and it's referring to King, um, King David. He says, uh, 
I believe, and therefore I have spoken. And we having the same spirit of faith, we too have believed, and therefore we too have spoken. Amen? Hallelujah. See, yo, yo, so, so if, if we understand that, and faith is the seed of our victory, right? Then, then your victory is really in your mouth. Your victory is in your mouth. Are you following me? See, it's by the mouth. The word of God is nigh us, right? In the mouth and in the heart, right? It's got to be in the mouth before it even gets into the heart. As we hear, believe, and confess, it, it goes into the heart. And then from the abundance thereof, it finds itself back in our mouth and comes forth into our lives, right? So your victory is in your mouth. Amen? Whatever you need in your life to turn for the better, right? The seed that's going to turn it is in your mouth. Whatever you need to see differently and better in your life, right? If it is to be seen, it's because it's going to be first coming out of your mouth. Are right, you understand what I'm saying? So, so now, have you found 1 John 5? Let, look at this very quickly, verse, verse 1. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That would be everyone in here, right? Everybody in here and those joining us virtually that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, that you have received him. Every such person is born of God. That means that means you are literally born from above. You are born again by the very spirit of God. You are God's child. Hallelujah. You're God's offspring. You have God's spiritual DNA inside of you. That comes with a separate benefit package, a separate inheritance. Forget about what ran, what may have ran in your family line in the natural. High blood pressure may have ran in your family. See, you got a new family. You're part of a new family. You're part of the household of faith. And the only thing running in your family line now is healing and health, abundance and wealth, peace and comfort. See, you got a new inheritance. Because you're born of God. You're God's child. God is your daddy. And Jesus is your Lord and your elder brother. Are you following me? Now look what it says. It says, okay, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, right? And everyone that beloveth him, that begat, loveth him also that is begotten. So if we love God because he's the one who did the begotten, the begatting rather, then if we love him, we love everyone who is begotten of him. That means we love one another. Right. OK. He says, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Right. <clears throat> For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, that we live by what he says. So, you know, what, you, you know what a, a good, simple definition of what of, of, of living by faith is. Living by faith is simply living out what you're hearing God say. That's, that's what it is. To live by faith is to live out what you're hearing God say. What is God saying to you in this moment, in this hour, with this issue, with this issue, with this issue, with this issue? What is God saying about your marriage, about your finances, about your health, about your relationships? What is God saying about your employment, about your promotions? What is God saying concerning his plan and prayer? See, as you hear what God is saying, faith comes by hearing what he says. And then as you obey and live out what he's saying, your faith is released. The force of faith, the force of faith. Faith is a spiritual force. It is, it is, it is, I'm going to dare say it's probably the most powerful spiritual force there is. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because see, 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 I mean, I mean, we talk about, I mean, love and faith probably are two sides of the same coin. But I'm going to kind of lean to faith from, from, on, on this moment. God loved us, right? And in his love for us, he sent Jesus to die for us. So we have eternal life because he so loved us, right? So you can't get away from the love. However, without faith to receive what love gave, it doesn't do us any good. So faith is a spiritual force that when it's released, it, it literally goes forth and arranges and rearranges the conditions 
of your life. It arranges and rearranges conditions in the earth as it pertains to your life, your welfare, your well-being, your prosperity, your success. Whatever needs to be arranged and put in place or rearranged and taken out of place, the spiritual force of faith will do the arranging. Are you understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. So look what he says. He says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever. And some translation says, whosoever. And I, wanna, I want us to look at it from that perspective as a whosoever. Amen? Because we are whosoever's. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, right? And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith is the seed of our victory. Faith is the means or the spiritual force whereby we overcome the evil that's present in this world, the God who is the, of the Lord of the world system, the trials and tribulations and testings and temptations that are present in the world, all the effects of the curse that are in the world because of Adam's sin, faith is the means whereby we overcome and live in victory. Victory is yours through faith. Are you understand what I'm saying? God's will for you is to always have the victory. How many of you know we are, we are really supposed to be living a victorious life? Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Oh, and what is it? Second Corinthians uh, 2 and 14, it says, thanks be to God who always causes us, always, always causes us to triumph in Christ. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, thanks be to God who always giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're supposed to live a victorious life. We're supposed to be victorious. We're supposed to prevail and win all the time. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? No matter what the opposition, no matter what way the curse is in manifestation, faith is your victory over it. Amen? Now, 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 in order for this, in order for our victory, to be, to be realized or to become tangible and manifested, uh, we're going to have to do with faith what God intended for us to do with faith, and that is treat it as the seed that it is. Amen? Go with me to Matthew 17. We're talking about faith as a seed, Right? And right now, things have, been, have begun to turn for the better for our lives right now. Right now. When I spoke that the power to make it turn was released when I said it. When you received it, your faith connected to it and formed a bridge for it to come from the spirit realm into the natural realm to turn things for the better in your life. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So you found Matthew 17? Okay, so now look at this, look at this, look at this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Okay, so, 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 here we, we're, we're coming in on a situation. I'm going to read verse 20. But what has happened here is that this man has brought his, his demon-possessed son to Jesus' disciples to get him to, and they couldn't cast him out, right? So Jesus and Peter and John, they come down off the mountain and, and, and like, what's going on? And they said, well, I, they couldn't cast him out, right? So Jesus, he, he's, he deals with it, right? <clears throat> and he casts the thing out. Now, it says here in, uh, in verse 19, it says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, that means separate and private, and said, why could not we cast him out? Right? How come we couldn't do it, Lord? Right? Look at what Jesus' response is. He says, because of your unbelief. 
right? Because of your unbelief. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't that they had no faith at all. It was just counter, it was, it was count, it, it was countered by the unbelief that they had. See, obviously they had some faith because they attempted to cast him out. At least they knew they were supposed to be able to. And when it didn't happen, rather than just accept that, they wanted to get clarity. How come it didn't work, Lord? And so he's saying it's because of your unbelief. And that's a revelation for a lot of us right now. We, we, we purpose to be in faith, using our faith, but, 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 but it's not, but things are not changing like they ought to change or at the rate they ought to change. We're not seeing or experiencing the fruit of our faith like, we, like God intends. And, and there's a reason because there is some unbelief in effect canceling out the faith. Are right, you understand what I'm saying? So Jesus says it, it was because of your unbelief that you couldn't cast him out. Right? Now unbelief is not non-belief. It's just simply believing the wrong thing. Right? Another, if you look this word unbelief up in the Greek, it, it, one of the definitions, one of the words used in the definition, it means faithlessness, right? From this standpoint, from this standpoint. And, and here's, here, okay, so you remember in John chapter 20, and in around verse 24, Jesus appeared to the disciples, but Thomas wasn't in the room. He just, boom, showed up through the wall, right? And so they all saw Jesus, and then they went and told Thomas that Jesus appeared, and Thomas didn't believe and Thomas said, unless I see the nail print in his hand, unless I touch and feel, right? So Tom, he says, I will not believe. Thomas based his belief, his willingness to believe, his choice to believe on physical evidence. He demanded that he have physical evidence, something he could see and touch before he would believe. And so at a later point, Jesus appeared with them again, and this time Thomas was with them. And he says, Thomas, here am I. Come and put your, put your finger in my, in my hole. Come and touch. Come and feel, right? So Thomas is saying, my Lord. Right? This is what Jesus says. He says, come and touch, come and feel. He said, and be not faithless. Right? But believing. Thomas explained. Jesus, my Lord, he believed, right? Jesus, I'm paraphrasing, Jesus said, big deal. He said, he said, you believe because of what physical evidence supported. But blessed are those who believe and have not yet seen. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so, so unbelief then either is us believing something else the, 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 other than the word, or it, it could also apply to us demand or, or bait. We can, it can be a right belief, but on, for wrong reasons. I can believe something that God says is so, but the reason I believe it is because I got physical evidence to support it. That's really unbelief. Because if the evidence is not there to support it, then where is my belief gone? It's gone. Are right, you understand what I'm saying? All right, so, so Jesus says you couldn't cast him out because... Of your unbelief. Now, I just want to I just want to hit this point real quick. Just drop down to verse 21. He says, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And most people, when we teach that, we talk, we teach it as though this particular, this kind of devil doesn't go out unless there's prayer and fast. And that's inaccurate. That's not true. That's not true. As a matter of fact, in the earlier manuscripts, verse 21 doesn't even appear in the earlier manuscripts. And if you got an amplified translation, you'll notice that it's italicized because it was not in the earlier manuscripts. There is no demon in hell that can withstand us when we use the name of Jesus. All right. So so but but now you could argue that this type of unbelief that we're dealing with doesn't go out unless we're doing some fasting and praying. See, some some of us believe the wrong thing so strongly. It, our minds have held are holding strongly to actually the wrong things. And it's become a stronghold. In order for that to be uprooted and dissolved out of our hearts and minds, it will require some prayer and some fasting. But that's for us to get the unbelief out of us, not to get a devil out of somebody else. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Okay, so, so now let's go back up here. Jesus says, okay, because of your unbelief. Now here it is. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say, Unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, 
and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible for you. Glory to God. So let me say it this way. If you have faith as a seed, you will say. In order to, to use faith as the seed that it is, it requires that we be saying something. Right? So now, so, so in this particular instance, Jesus says, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove yonder hence, and it'll be removed. In other words, and now, now think about that. Jesus is saying, if you have faith as a seed, you can say something. You can speak to something and call something that's in your way to be removed out of your way. You can speak to what's in your life currently that shouldn't be and command it to be removed yet, hence, and it'll be moved. Are y'all following what I'm saying? If you have faith as a seed, you'll say. Now, 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 let's come back here. Let's plug this in a little bit again. He says faith as a grain of mustard seed. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. So if you, if you look over, you don't have to look over that, but if you go to Mark chapter 4, around verse 31, it talks about faith as a seed. It talks about, it's a, it's a comparison about the kingdom of God. If you have faith as a mustard seed, and it talks about how the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds or the least of all seeds, right? Yet, once it's sown and it's grown, it produces the greatest of herbs. In other words, the greatest, the greatest herbs, the largest herbs come from the smallest seed. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So now listen, listen, listen. Sometimes when we're looking at the mountain we're dealing with, at the opposition, at those present evil circumstances, it can seem overwhelming. It can seem so big that it's just hopeless. But understand, you have been dealt the measure of faith, and if you use it as a seed and say, the measure of faith that you use as a seed by saying will produce a harvest, an end result big enough to cover your situation. The same way the seed of a mustard, which is the least of all seeds, produces the greatest of all herbs, the seed of your faith will produce the greatest of all victories. However big God needs to show out on your behalf, he'll show out on your behalf in response to your faith being sown, being released, being spoken out of your mouth through the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Okay, so now look, 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 look what he says. So if you have faith as a seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence, to yonder place, and it shall remove. Now, now think about it. Just think about it in the natural now. Just think about a mountain, uh, how big and massive a mountain is. It's part of the structure, the lay of the land. And your faith, the force of your faith, when released, will rearrange the lay of the land, the geographical layout, to move a mountain from one place to another. And that's the way it works in the spirit. You say about your life, about your situation, what God's word already says about your life and your situation. And you go about your business expecting what you say to come to pass. And you'll have it. The force of faith will be released to arrange or, and or rearrange Everything about your life that ain't what it ought to be. Right? And it will cause things in your life to turn for the better. For the better. Right? Look, and look what else he says. He says this. 
He says, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, we hear that, but do we hear that? Nothing shall be impossible for you. In other words, you know what that means? You know what that means? That nothing shall be able, when you are using your faith as a seed, nothing shall be impossible. That means you don't have to settle for anything. You don't get to a place and, and to a point and say, okay, well, that's just, as, that's just as good as we can do. That's just as far as we can go. Well, I just have to settle for that. No, 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 because nothing shall be impossible for you. You don't have to put up with anything less than God's best. 